Hey there, and welcome to another edition of Truth and Rhythm. This is the interview show that goes deep in the pocket with contemporary music's foremost masters of the groove. I am your host, Scott Dr. Jake Skolfein, musicologist and author of Everything is on the One, the First Guide of Funk. If you don't have your copy, get on over to Amazon and pick one up. You'll be so glad you did. It's full of all kinds of great history, uh, top 10 and 20 lists, reviews, lots of reviews, and everything you need to know A to Z on the funk. Whether you're watching the video version of this program on YouTube or through funkandstuff.net, or listening to the audio version, the podcast, through iTunes or other leading providers, as always, I thank you very much for your continued interest and support in the program. Speaking of which, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't already done so, subscribe at YouTube to the Funk and Stuff channel. That's where Truth and Rhythm lives. That's where it breathes. That's where it all happens. And there's lots of other good stuff there, too. But if you do subscribe, and of course it's free, you get the show before anyone else. So tell a friend, tell family. We need that support. Show these R&B, funk, jazz artists that you love and appreciate what they do. This is a show unlike any other that not only features those artists, but also does so in a forum that has never been done before. Deep, mostly uncensored, and intimate profiles and stories and memories with all these amazing recording artists and other key figures from the industry. So thank you for being a fan and for following the program. We're growing, growing all the time, and uh, you know this is your show, so thank you. Featured in this milestone 100th episode of Truth and Rhythm. Wow, got there fast, and another 100 to go, hopefully. But featured in this very special 100th edition of the show is singer, songwriter, percussionist, producer, Philip Bailey who has spent 47 years as a primary figure of the legendary funk R&B and pop band, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Born and raised in Denver, Bailey's early influences included Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Stevie Wonder, Sarah Vaughan, and Dionne Warwick. Famous for his four octave vocal range, and particularly for his show-stopping falsetto register, Bailey has recorded some 20 albums with Earth, Wind, and Fire, and another 10 as a solo artist. The Grammy award-winning Rock and Roll Hall of Famer has also collaborated with new, numerous other acts, and the late 1970s produced the Kinsman Daz Band's first two albums. That group later became, of course, the Daz Band. Here, Truth and Rhythm caught up with Bailey from the road between tour dates with his new band supporting his latest solo album called Love Will Find A Way. His first solo effort since 2002, which is primarily jazz-tinged cover tunes, including the lead Curtis Mayfield composed single, Billy Jack, features upper echelon musicians like Chick Corea, Steve Gadd, Christian McBride, Robert Glasper, Kamasi Washington, Will I Am, and Bilal. Although this was taped prior, the album was released June 21st, and so it's available from your favorite retail, streaming and download services now. So go out there and get it if you haven't already. The real meat of this interview, though, is a discussion of Earth, Wind & Fire's creative peak and funkiest period spanning 1974 to 1977, and including the treasured works for the ages. Those are Open Our Eyes, That's the Way of the World, Gratitude, Spirit, and All in All. Do I get chills and goosebumps just thinking of those amazing records. Along the way are Bailey's tributes to late Earth, Wind & Fire founder Maurice White, his brother Verdine White, and late composer, arranger, and group mentor Charles Stepney. You'll have to forgive the technical shortcomings not uncommon when dealing with hotel connectivity in this interview. With that said, let's wish Truth and Rhythm a happy 100th episode and find out all the reasons why Philip Bailey and Earth, Wind & Fire continue to be so mighty mighty hey it is a pure joy to welcome to truth and rhythm mr philip bailey the amazing grammy winning vocalist renowned for his stunning falsetto as well as being a percussionist composer and producer who since 1972 has been one of the most prominent members 
of the legendary pop R&B and funk group Earth, Wind, and Fire. I try to do it like they do at the concerts. How are you, Philip? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I appreciate you joining the show. And where are you coming to us from today? Oh, I'm in um, Illinois, outside Chicago. All right. And is, is that home now or are you traveling? No, I'm traveling. I'm actually doing a, a date here at a outside venue called Ravinia with so, several artists and Ramsey Lewis and my band. Oh, that's exciting. Very cool. How many how many shows have you done uh, so far? Are you just getting warmed up or are you kind of in the yeah, group? We're just already? starting. We're just starting. We're just doing a promotional tour for the for the project, for the um level fine boy project. Yeah. So we rehearsed in in uh in Brooklyn. And we're headed and we're headed out to uh do several cities. And then I go back to my day job, which is Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> Moonlighting again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to talk about your exciting uh, new solo project and you know how 2019 is shaping up for you. But first, we're going to get into a little Earth, Wind, and Fire history. Um, the mystical, magical Earth, Wind, and Fire. I have to confess, I've been a huge fan since 1975. You know, I kind of hopped aboard with That's the Way of the World and Every record after then I got as soon as it came out and went back and got all the other stuff too. And so um, I got to show you something here. Hopefully you can see from 1979. This is the uh, original program that I still have. I saw that wow. at the forum in Los Angeles, which is where I'm from. <laughs> and not only that, but you may remember this. It's the t-shirt from the tour. Wow. So it doesn't fit anymore, but I still have it. <laughs> Amazing. You know, um, Larry Dunn has been on the show. Sheldon Reynolds has been on the show. So we're in good company. Oh, all right. And uh, I just want to mention also, in fact, this is the 100th episode of the show. So you have that distinct. Wow. All right. <laughs> So in the interest of time, Philip, what I'd like to do is just uh, really uh, quickly focus on my favorite period of Earth, Wind, and Fire, which is the 74 to 77, which I think was, you know, when the group was both at its creative and commercial peak. For those wanting to fill in the gaps, I highly recommend reading Shining Star, Breaking the Elements of Earth, Wind, and Fire, Philip Bailey's wonderful 2014 autobiography. So, you ready to uh, talk a little history? Mm hmm. Open Our Eyes, 1974. A big change in sound. Radio and public responded, had hits like Columbia and Mighty Mighty. Is there anything that pops out in your mind about those sessions and about that change in direction? Hmm. I don't know if we were thinking about the. It has balance shifting and direction as much as we were just uh, just being present in the times that we were in and you know trying to do the the best music that we could do but you know looking back on it it was a shift indeed um it was you know a couple records in on columbia and, um, you know, I think it was really the beginning of what Earth, Wind & Fire would continue to be from that point. That's true. That's true. Well, you know, we were just on the heels of all the, you know, the uh, late 60s, you know, early 70s inspiration from, you know, all the rock, pop. And R and B uh, legends who became legends. So it was a very, uh, it was a very fruitful time in music history. It was also a very competitive time, and you guys still managed to stand out really well. Is there any uh, song from that record, uh, "Open Our Eyes," that, that is your personal favorite, and why? No. Open our eyes, open our eyes. 
do you? Which song were on Open Eyes? Well, as I mentioned, Kalimba, Mighty Mighty. Um, I think Devotion was on there. Oh, okay. Kalimba was actually my first uh, recorded writ song that I, you know, written and recorded song. I shared with Maurice and we co wrote together. That was pretty cool to to see my name and credits and stuff and as being a writer. And I would continue on to to do so throughout the career. Yeah, that is a, a milestone right there. And and Larry Dunn had talked about, you know, how it was quite an experience just being in that environment in Colorado and making that Caribou Ranch uh, recording. So it sounded like a pretty organic situation. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. We were in our little sanctuary, um, and uh, a very creative environment. Uh, and you could just kind of work as you know, as as it as you felt it. Um, and uh, a fantastic uh, experience of those records recorded at Caribou. And those tracks still sound good when you guys do it live today, so. Yeah, you know, uh, George Massenberg, he is, he's definitely a legend in the technology and sound world he was way before his time yeah of course the, the engineer that worked closely with you guys um phenomenal job that he did but everyone plays such a key role in, in creating that magic and um that's the way the world which i mentioned at the outset and of course it's right there that was the record that really kind of launched you guys into the stratosphere in terms of uh, you know success uh, shining star Reasons and um, the title track, of course, were um, songs that got the most attention and airplay. But I mean, that that record was like almost like the greatest hits, you know. <laughs> and e even though the uh, the movie it was associated with didn't uh, do quite so well, you guys definitely made lemonade out of. Uh, if you want to look at that movie as a lemon, but um, what do you remember about? that period if anything pops out at you uh philip from the that's the way the world era charles stepney without charles stepney none of that would have been possible he was a co-writer co-producer arranger and uh he was our mentor i felt like you know shining star hit the airwaves it really there was nothing that has sounded quite like it before um, do you remember in particular when you first heard, you know, the guys laying down that that music? Well, I mean, I, I don't remember the, exactly the, the the moment, you know, because it was uh, we were we were in our creative cocoon, as it were, you know, and we were recording stuff every day. So yeah, I don't remember the exact day. And we tracked Shining Star. You know, like, because we would track so much, so much stuff, and and then we would see what made the cut. And you know, like sometimes it was a track that kind of uh, morphed into being something that we hadn't expected but we would do the tracks and then me and maurice would go and work on the on the lyrics i do remember in our um me and maurice uh writing those lyrics though because we were coming up with the same lines at the same time uh, and kind of finding that quite amazing so you guys were in that kind of synchronicity that's amazing yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that must have been something to f to feel that kind of connection musically um and of course it was your first uh, it was a number one hit so when, when that hit number one was that something that was 
very exciting or are you guys still just kind of keeping your head down and doing your thing? Oh, no, I'm sure. I mean, who, who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be excited about a number one record? You know, I'm you know I'm sure we were over the moon about having uh, that kind of uh, success and gratification. Yeah, and it was inspiring too. It inspired us to actually that kind of stuff. When you get validated like that, it kind of gives you a you know, shot in the arm to, you know, okay, let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, and it also tends to uh, make the label give you more freedom to do your thing, which is nice, too. That's true. And you guys followed it up quickly with the live, uh, three sides live, Gratitude, and the one side of new stuff that had more hits, sing a song, and... Uh, can't hide love and and sort of uh in some people's minds i think definitive live versions of reasons and devotion and um you know i back then with the vinyl records gratitude was one that i totally wore out i mean in an era when there was a lot of live records it stood head and shoulders incredible incredible set and your performances on on Reasons and, and devotion, just unbelievable. Well, you know, I have to give credit to uh, to, to Charles Stepney, and uh, because uh, I remember him coaching us through doing our lead vocals and some of the comments that you know he would make, you know, that would help us to connect with the song. So I do remember that. Aside from him, uh, are there one or two or maybe more folks you can point to that really influenced your, your singing style? And, and, you know, how did you hit those notes, Philip? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, no, we were just had, we had a, a you know, like a, a real intimate team of people. And, I was just, you know, God inspired. Um, just singing, you know, just singing, man. You know, it's like when you sing, you're not thinking about, you're not thinking about stuff, you know, or you shouldn't be. I'm not, cra you know, you're not crafting stuff, you know, and thinking about, you know, hitting a high note and you know, I hit it right here. Or, you know, it's just, you just, you just get in the moment and, you know, allow the song to to um, be what it's going to be. It's a beautiful thing, definitely. A lot of magic happening in those uh, sessions and performances. You know, it's funny. A lot of people think that Reasons, they think of Reasons as a love song, but it's not exactly a love song lyrically, right? So, um, <laughs> well, no, no I, I mean, I mean, it's a sex song. It's not necessarily a love song. And it's it, it's interesting when people say, yeah, I played that song at my wedding. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Obviously, you didn't listen to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I like to say that, you know, that song is so smooth and you did such an amazing job it on is. it that whatever the lyrics were, I think they probably right. played at weddings. Yeah, that's it. it it's very... It's very seductive, and uh, you know, and it just, you know, it just touched that that passionate nerve in people. They didn't not listen, didn't necessarily listening to the lyrics and the content, but just feeling the the vibe. And um, you know, we've talked a lot about Charles Stephanie and the next record, Spirit, was certainly um, a landmark in terms of you know change with the band and 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 his his tragic passing and. You know, somehow the band uh, pulled together and persevered on um, after that happened. And is there anything that strikes you, uh, pops in your mind about that particular period and, and spirit? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I just remember that there was such a enormous uh, void and uh, 
and profound grief and sadness and just unbelief because, you know, we weren't, no one was prepared for that. It was very sudden. This record, despite that, I mean, produced more hits still. Uh, the winning streak continued with Get Away, um, Saturday Night, and a track that I think should have been a much bigger hit, On Your Face. Well, you know, On Your Face was, was sampled and used and became a big, you know, with hip-hop songs and so forth. Um, but I, you know, it has that, it has several sections in it that people have taken one of the other sections and made other songs with them. It just goes to show you, you know, the, how great songs just stand the test of time. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, you know, and I think with this record, especially on Getaway, it really made prominent the Earth, Wind & Fire horns. You know, their performance on that track, just astounding. And is there anything that you can say about, about those Earth, Wind & Fire horns and, and what they added to the mix? Well, obviously, it was a trademark sound, became a trademark sound that was later used, you know, in Phil Collins' camp, you know, and you know, are some of his most iconic songs, like Susudio. And those guys were um, a fiery horn section, you know, and very sought after, because they were hot. They sure were hot. I mean, I think, um, you know, people think of horn sections, you know, there's only a handful that are the best, and they're definitely right in that conversation. Um, all in All came in 77, and this was the, kind of the first record, I guess, that was pretty much, I don't know if it was entirely independent of Charles Stepney, but um, I think close to it. And, and you guys pulled it together amazingly, because this this is one of my definite all-time favorite Earth, Wind, Fire records, and Serpentine Fire, Fantasy, and uh, lots of other very great, deep album tracks on All in All. Um, Anything about that, Philip, that stands out or that's a favorite of yours? Well, that's when we reached out to Tom Tom 84 in Chicago to do arrangements. And uh, he had a different style than Set Mate, but still very. Um, on um, on um, exposed as it were it took to the um pop market you know on the big stage like you know later on those songs that he arranged would become do you tend to feel most partial to the tracks you know where you sing the lead, like I'll write a song for you, or does it that not matter in the repertoire? No, I don't, no, I, I'm part of the group, and you know the song is the group, and you know every part is very important to the, you know the, you know, the uh, presence and magnitude of, of, of every song. So, no, I'm just, I'm just glad, I'm glad to be in the band, where no matter what part I'm playing. I think for me, you know, following the group, all in all was kind of the end of a, of a chapter for the group in a way. I mean, I Am came next and it was quite a bit different. And I think, you know, from there, the, the group evolved in different ways. So, um, I was going to stop there in terms of the Earth, Wind, Fire conversation, but I did want to ask you, Philip, you know, what can you tell us about Maurice White as a visionary, as a producer, as a musician, as a man? Well, I mean, Maurice is special, you know, he, 
had a fierce work ethic, a consummate visionary, and uh, a you know just a, a a a spirit that was just wide open to um, to to what was coming in, you know, and what. You know, wasn't afraid to to embrace it. So that that was that was exciting. How how intense was he? Was he a real taskmaster? A uh, master rather? Um, what, could he have fun in the studio too, or what was he like? You know, we always have fun, you know. But you know, we got down to business too. You know, we you know we we had we had fun getting down to business. And then we had fun just goofing off, you know, too. But yeah. And of course, uh, brother Verdine on bass, um, such a ball of fiery energy. And you know, I had uh, the guys from Pockets on the show recently, and of course, he mentored them. Um, but what's your? You've had such a long relationship now with Verdine. What what can you tell us about about him in a nutshell? Mm -hmm. I mean, Verdeen is the mascot for the band, really. You know, he sleeps, eats, breathes, you know, the earth, wind, and fire. So, you know, he's you know, he's definitely, and and I've never seen him get on the stage and not be excited. Never. Not ever. Which is <laughs> amazing. I mean, he's excited every single every single time he steps on the stage, he's excited. So, you know, he that that's that's contagious. And so we are we call him the energy of the band. And so, you know, yeah, we we draw off that energy. He's like the energizer bunny. <laughs> They should have probably uh, recruited him for those uh, battery commercials. No question. I don't think the battery can handle him. <laughs> and um, Ralph Johnson, you know, um, you know, the three of you have have carried forth the legacy for so long. You know, why why do you think? What is it about the three of you guys that ended up carrying this legacy as far as you have? Hmm. Well, you know, I mean, I, you know, I definitely know it's a God thing, but, um, you know, we're very fortunate that, you know, the three uh, guys' temperaments, personality and temperaments don't fight against each other. Well, how would you describe Ralph's personality? Ralph is... He's like he is on stage. He's cool. <laughs> He's pretty cool. Just laid back. Out of all the uh, incredible works, is there one Earth, Wind & Fire album that's your favorite? I don't know. If I said one, it would, then I would hear, it, hear something and go, oh, yeah. But I mean, what comes to mind is maybe all in all is high on the radar. Uh, gratitude, I am. So there's the uh, the trio right there. Yeah, and you know, and that's the way the world, you know, those records. But you know, I really like um, faces too. I really like faces. I think that we just had too much music on there, or the times were changing or whatever, but I thought it was a solid record. Yeah, it was a lot for uh, people to digest, and the industry was kind of going through a lot of changes then, too, I think. Mm -hmm. But definitely an album that's rewarding to go back and revisit again, Faces. I recommend people do that if they haven't already. Um, can you share with us one unforgettable 
experience from all of your amazing worldwide performances on the road. Is there one uh, funny or just uh, heartwarming or some kind of road performance memory you could just share with us? Mm, we had a rigged stage and when you go, you know, that when the, the back of the stage is elevated. So we were on the break stage at the intro in a, a pose and they would put Coca-Cola on the stage so it wouldn't slip. But that night they put Coca-Cola on the stage and then they started the fog machine and it worked just the opposite. So we were standing in the pose at the beginning and then people started to slide down the, the rake stage and trying to keep our composure and laughing at one another <laughs> as we hit the floor, you know, sat hit the floor. And that, you know, everybody was was trying to hold it together at that point. And it was the beginning of the show. That's probably, that's probably the funniest thing that ever happened. Do, do, do you remember approximately where and, and what year that might have been? No, man. <laughs> did did what did anybody get uh, scolded out for, for that happening, or was it just all laughs? No, no. Anyway, I don't remember anybody getting scolded or anything. How would you describe the uh, Earth and Fire sound that's made it so unique? Um, are there maybe three qualities you can point to in your mind that that make it something that is just so special? Mm, I, you know, I, I, rhythm, melody, and sound. Hey, you know what? We're going to have to wrap this up because I'm supposed to be going to a sound check. Hey, you have a new record uh, about to come out. The single is hit. The single is uh, Billy Jack, a Curtis Mayfield cover. Um, how did you come to decide to read to, to do that song it's an amazing version and uh, tell us about the, about the new record well it's a project that uh, we started with uh, chick Corea and and uh, christian mcbride initially and then uh, robert glasper and uh, from that uh, from that nucleus um it spread out to you know produ a producer songwriter pianist herman jackson and you know, the other guest stars on the project, uh, Christian Scott, um, Kamazi Washington, Bilal, you know, Will I Am, you know, and, uh, you know, the, it, it was a project that was initially inspired by the social and political um, tensions that, you know, we've been going through for, you know, some, some years that harken back to the turbulent 60s. And so we got songs that were uh, that were prevalent in that time period. Um, the uh, Curtis Mayfield songs and the uh, Abby Lincoln and um, Marvin Gaye. You know, so we chose these songs not only for their message, but Vocally, we thought that it would be the kind of songs that I could deliver. And uh, we, it was a self-funded project. Um, I worked on it for over two years. In between my day gig for Earth, Wind & Fire, um, Russell um, Elevato mixed it, and uh, Harvey Mason did all the lead vocals, produced all the lead vocals. And once we got finished, um, we shopped it and we we eventually partnered with Verve, which I'm proud to be associated with all those great legendary artists who were, you know, on Verve, you know, uh, back in the day. And uh, now we're out uh, presently uh, starting a solo uh, promotional tour for a couple weeks. 
do you think that that'll uh, extend out to any other shows throughout the year or uh, might any of these songs uh, be heard in Earth, Wind & Fire set or how do you do that? No, I don't think uh, they'll be played in any Earth, Wind & Fire set. We, we, you know, it's, it's a different, it's a different thing. And, you know, I, I do it for that reason, you know, to, to grow and evolve and, and you know, to uh, do something different. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's not, they, you know, they, I have their full support and always have. It's my 10th uh, solo project um, in my career. Uh, I've won a uh, Grammy for, for one, and of course, the number one single, uh, Easy Lover, with Phil Collins on Chinese Wall record. But yeah, I've always done stuff that would help me to uh, feel uh, energized and jumpstart, you know, just the creative flow. And uh, this is one of those projects that I'm very proud of and uh, having a lot of fun with. That's fantastic. Well, I, I look forward to hearing all the rest of it. Is it all covers, Philip, or are there some originals? We we wrote a couple originals that just happened in the studio, but they're mostly covers. And uh, the project is out the 21st, I think. Congratulations on it. And um, before we part ways, uh, I think... Um, Wanted to mention a, a, a little something about your foundation, the uh, Music is Unity. Yeah, Music is Unity is our foundation that me and my daughter founded that benefits the emancipated foster care youth, youth that are aging out of the foster system. And we, a portion of our proceeds and Earth, Wind, and Fire proceeds and my personal proceeds go to helping fund organizations that are giving these young folk. Um, a helping hand in uh, navigating through life successfully uh, once they're they've aged out of uh, foster care. So it's a great uh, it's a great need and very underserved. You could go to musicisunity.org, find out what we do, and to uh, donate. Wow, that is great. Kudos to you for for leading something that important, Philip. Uh, last question before I release you, and that is, as you look back, what accomplishment or piece of work are you most proud of? You know, I um, interviewers always ask that kind of stuff. It's very interesting. You know, like, I, like when you say most, it's like, it kind of puts a lot of other things in the background, you know. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm proud of the project that I just did, and you know, I'm proud of you know a lot of the you know the accomplishments that I've been you know blessed to be able to have um, making music, you know, and uh, looking forward to the next thing. I'm always looking forward to the next thing. And Earth, Wind & Fire is touring throughout the rest of the year. Is it a busy uh, schedule? Yeah, we're touring. Fantastic. Hey, Philip, thank you so much. Wish, all right. wish you all the continued success. Thank you. All right, sir. Take good care. All right, back in studio. You know, it's kind of funny, but not so unusual, how casual or cavalier almost Bailey was in referencing the pinnacles of Earth, Wind & Fire and his own astounding his own astounding achievements rather but it's cool to learn his favorite ewf albums are essentially uh the same as my own although i do take some exception with 1979's i am because that turned the funk way down and the pop way up but other than that we're eye to eye pretty much i would have liked to have had better imaging on his side of things and more time you know something a little bit closer to the four hours I had with Larry Dunn. That's an amazing epic uh, episode. If you haven't seen that, make sure you do. But the two hours I had with Sheldon Reynolds, 
another great episode. Make sure you check that out if you haven't already. But it was so great. And I'm just ecstatic to have connected with Philip Bailey for this episode of Truth and Rhythm. So again, a huge thanks out to him. And it was it was great connecting. And I hope that we can eventually get Verdeen White on an upcoming show. So uh, keep your fingers crossed on that one. Also, very large thanks out to you, the viewer. You're the one that helps keep this show afloat, you know, not financially, but the support is great by itself. Um, you know, if you want to send me a couple of bucks, feel free. You know, there's information on how to contact me. Uh, but uh, not necessary, but appreciate it if you want to. Uh, but in any case, I digress. If you haven't already subscribed, support the show by subscribing at YouTube to the Funkin' Stuff channel. That's where Truth and Rhythm lives. You'll get shows early there. You'll get uh, quick take uh, special episodes uh, or segments that are abbreviated to like music history lessons, if you will. And, you know, we need that support. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. But also spread the word. This is basically a word of mouth uh, phenomenon. And, you know, the uh, audience has been growing tremendously. You know, I'm really working hard to bring you the very best possible funk, R&B, and jazz musicians and figures. And it's showing, you know, the numbers are, are showing it. So we're still not that big, but let's get bigger. You know, let's fight back against all the uh, synthetic music that's out there and the sort of nose devoids of funk and all that kind of stuff. Real music by real musicians, real creativity, funk, jazz, and R&B, support it, support this show. Also write me, write Scott G at funkistuff.net. Let me know who else you'd like to see on the show. Let's just talk music. You know, if you write me, you'll hear back very quickly and maybe in depth as well, I promise. Um, it's a two-way dialogue. This is your show. So keep it going, folks. And uh, also appreciate the comments and, you know, any kind of interactivity is wonderful. So with that, as always, this is Scott Dr. G. Skullfine saying, keep on vibrating to the rhythm of the one.